today I want to share with you the well-known biblical story that we're all familiar with, the story of Adam and Eve. But I'd like to share it with you, I hope, in a way that will shed some new light on this story and be a deep form of guidance for all of our lives. Because this story is just magnificent. It is so rich in guiding us because it touches on the very struggle we all have, the struggle between right and wrong, and how to respond to that struggle. The fact that Adam and Eve sinned, they did wrong, is that really so shocking? To me it isn't. My list of wrongdoings goes far beyond what what I can fit onto a sheet of paper. Humanity is inherently the struggle between right and wrong. And we do our best to improve the right and minimize the wrong. We are inherently designed with an evil inclination, with an animal soul, with a self-orientation, which gets us into trouble. And we fight that and overcome that. So Adam and Eve did wrong. They were the first to have done wrong, granted. But that they did wrong, for me, is not that shocking. It's what happens after they did wrong that this story is very, very telling. What happens after they do wrong? What do they do? How do they react to their act? They go into hiding. And this is so telling. They go into hiding. And God shows up on the scene. And God says, where are you? Adam and Eve, where are you? God doesn't address what they did. He addresses where they are. He addresses how they reacted, not how they acted. This is so telling because it demonstrates to us that how we react to even a wrongdoing can be more significant than the act itself. And we follow the story along. And Adam and Eve, Adam responds to God and says that I'm hiding because I discovered that I am unclothed. And God suggests, is there a reason why you suddenly discovered that? Is there something you possibly did? Did you do something I told you not to do? And what does Adam say? The woman which you, God, gave me is the one who told me to sin. And what Adam continues to do as God offers him a second opportunity to come forth, from the hiding and deal with what he did wrong, what Adam does is go further into hiding by blaming God who gave him his wife who offered him to eat. And when we blame, we are simply hiding from taking responsibility. And so when God sees that Adam is insistent He's insistent on hiding. What does God do? God says, I will need to give you consequences because I must teach you not to hide. That is the worst possible thing that a person can do. It's the uh, the worst possible reaction to a negative action. And so God lays out the consequences for the snake, for Eve, and for Adam. That's not the end of the story. And we mustn't end the story there. Part of the text is just a couple of verses right after God lays out the consequences. And the Torah tells us, throws into the story, the last two verses, and Adam gave a name to his wife Eve, and he called her Chava, the Hebrew version of Eve. He called her Chava. Why? The Torah says because she is the mother of all life. 
She's the first mother. She's the mother of all humanity. So he names her Machava, which is a word, a name which indicates um, life, because she is the mother of all life. Now, when we pay close attention to the story, we know that God told Adam and Eve that if they are to eat from the tree that he told them not to, then they will die. Meaning that they will bring death to the world. They would have lived for eternity. But once they ate from the tree, their lives were no longer eternal. Every moment they lived was a moment closer to their expiration, to death. Eve was the one who ate the fruit. Eve was the one who gave her husband, Adam, to eat from the fruit. She brought death to the world. She brought death to the world. And Adam is calling her the mother of all life? That is the greatest lie in the world. Which makes the final verse in this section of the story even more shocking. Because God responds in the next verse and it says, God then made them clothing and he clothed them. God now says, I'll assist you. And God gives them clothing after Adam says this enormous lie by calling his wife the mother of all life when she's the one who brought death to the universe. The one thing all of us fear. Maybe we don't. But we all know is inevitable. Here is the message of this last part of the story, which is even more magnificent. When God saw that Adam called his wife the mother of all life, God said, Adam, you got the message. You learned your lesson. I am so proud of you. Let us get clothing on you so you no longer have to be ashamed. How did Adam get the message? He got the message because Adam demonstrated, God, I understand. When I do something wrong, I have to face it and deal with it. That's the only way for us to improve and even reach higher and greater heights than we, were, than we had reached before. We mustn't hide. And he demonstrated that by showing that he will never hide again. Or he will, tr he will try not to hide again. However, when someone else stumbles and falls, hiding was made to cover them, not to cover ourselves. And so when Adam covered Eve and stopped covering himself, he demonstrated two things to God, that I am no longer going to hide from my weaknesses, and I am going to use hiding to protect the other who is challenged with their weaknesses. You see, when someone else stumbles and falls, when they demonstrate a weakness, calling them out only brings more shame to them and only tells them, I need to hide more because of the pain that I am experiencing. But when the others around this person embrace and accept the person, despite the fact that they did wrong. Not denying that they did wrong, but saying that although you did wrong, we still accept you, embrace you, and love you. That gives them the safety to look at themselves honestly and also learn not to hide. So when God saw Adam demonstrate this by hiding the, the, his wife's mistake, which brought death to the world, by focusing on another reality that she is the source of all living in the world. God said, Adam, not only did you learn not to hide for yourself, you also learned that hiding was created for protecting others. Now is the time for me to acknowledge you. 
This is so powerful because every single one of us, every single one of us can look at this story and say, wow, I need to find the courage to look myself in the mirror and deal with what I've done wrong. Deal with my challenges. To know that God doesn't despise me or reject me because of them. God is far more concerned with my reaction than he is concerned about my action. This touches on the core of what all of us deal with, wrongdoing and rectification. As long as we're hiding, we are in deep trouble because there is no fixing from a place of hiding. The moment we find the strength to stand up and face our own selves, we begin to rectify and become far more beautiful people. When we learn to do that for ourselves, we begin to do it for others. And this is how we help the world. Mm -hmm.